Well, it was absolutely wonderful to be asked. One knew that Joe Orton's previous two plays had been controversial, and the fact of his death and everything, he was what everyone was talking about at the time, and quite rightly. I mean, he started something new, something fresh, something different, something black, something... It was wonderful to be asked. And Sir Ralph, I mean, what more could an actress ask, really? It was absolutely wonderful. Yes, they went reasonably smoothly. I can't remember any major upsets. I mean, I think that Sir Ralph had <laughs> slight problems about various things and various lines. I can't remember things actually being changed, but I do remember Robert Chetwin, the director, having to explain things to him. Like, he had to say, I think it was something to do with necrophilia. And Sir Ralph was saying, necro something. And so Robert said, actually, Sir Ralph, it's necrophilia. And Sir Ralph said, oh, I've never said the word before. So, I mean, it was, it was wonderful. But one did wonder at times whether Sir Ralph really fully understood what he was doing and what the play meant. And I remember him being so shocked when people were shocked by him being in this really modern, different play. I remember uh, we did two weeks previous to the West End. Um, one was in Brighton. And of course, the matinee was full of dear little old ladies coming to see Sir Ralph in a play. They were so shocked. And I remember one matinee, two ladies, just before the matinee, they tore up their programmes and threw them on the stage. Sir Ralph didn't know what to do. And I don't think he fully realised what he had let himself in for. Well, I think... As certainly as far as Sir Ralph is concerned, and it was all left in, all reference to Churchill and his parts. And I think that was quite shocking because it was sort of a bit... If it had been 20 years on, like even now, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but Churchill was still in everybody's mind and was an important figure. So that part of it was shocking. And of course, all that, which is slid over in a comic way about who is mad and who is not mad. I mean, are the sane people mad and are the mad people sane? How do you tell the difference? I mean, it was a wonderfully black humor. Um, and it's never fully resolved in the play, but that's part of its joy. Now, any memoir, any writing about theatre in the 60s talks about the first night of what the butler saw at the Queen's Theatre with Ralph Richardson, because it was quite extraordinary. It started just after the interval when I wasn't on stage, but I, and I can't remember who it was, but there was somebody in the audience shouted something. and But anyway, that passed. Now, about 10 minutes before the end, I was on stage with Coral Brown, and I had a line, what am I doing here? And somebody in the audience shouted, you might well ask. And I, of course, froze. I, I, I was inexperienced in coping with things like this. Coral Brown was magnificent. She drew herself up and said, shut up. And I mean, and of course they did for a minute or two, but of course it carried on, and it carried on right until the curtain calls. And the stalls and the first tier, of course, behaved perfectly. They were theatre girls. But the gallery and the top bit behaved appalling. 
appallingly. They shouted and screamed, rubbish, disgraceful, shouldn't be allowed. And they booed and booed and shouted when anybody came on for a curtain call. They just booed and shouted. And of course, then the stalls decided that they ought to join in. So they all cheered and, and clapped and got up. In fact, some people kept, got up and came down right to the front of the stage and, you know, were clapping above their heads and doing all of that to kind of counteract this. And it went on and on. I remember standing there thinking, what are we supposed to do? It was amazing. And of course, in retrospect, it, I don't know that there's ever been an evening quite like it. Joe Orton would have loved it. I mean, he was so controversial. And he was like Marmite. You loved it or hated it. And um, it, it was interesting about the reviews. It's all, I, I've often thought about this when you get the odd bad review. Now, some of the reviews were interesting. Some of the reviews were good, but a large percentage were not good. But they were not good in such a positive way that I think it was the bad reviews that got people to come to see it. I think they read it and thought, oh, we have to see this. You know, they weren't reviews that put you off and said, oh, I don't want to see that. So consequently, we ran, I, I think, for about five, six months in, in the West End. Um, I mean, largely on Sir Ralph's name. Everybody always wanted to see whatever he was doing. But uh, Joe Orton, oh my goodness, what a name. What a, what a loss. What would he have written? What would he have given us in the future? It's a tragedy, really, isn't it? Um, I don't think it impacted the play at all. Only in as much as the, the, the following day, the press was filled with stories about um, this, uh, you know, reaction to Joe Orton's play. And of course, it just encouraged people to want to see more. Uh, it was amazing, absolutely amazing. It didn't change anything. In fact, I think secretly everyone was really pleased. <laughs> I do, I do. And... Uh, Oh, I mean, I do remember the overriding feeling from everybody that they wished that Joe Orton was there because he would have loved it to cause that kind of a stir and that much of an upset. He would have loved it. Right from when I first read the script, I knew that this was something important. It was like, I think it must have been, when all those North Country actors started doing reality at the Royal Court. It was something completely new. And it was a sea change. You could almost see things change from that moment. Not everybody liked it, but it was there. And it was wonderful. Well, the mishap with the trolley. Sir Ralph had... I was lying on a large, you know, like a hospital trolley. And I was lying there. And Sir Ralph had to push me on downstage so that the trolley was facing the audience. And he was supposed to turn the trolley sideways because there was a slight rake on the Queen's stage in Shaftesbury Avenue. And so that I stayed there. Well, of course, <laughs> one day he... he wheels me on and just lets go and goes and does something else. And the trolley started to career towards the stalls. And it was Peter Bayliss, I think, who did a flying leap onto the floor like a football tackle and grabbed the bottom of the trolley and pulled it back, of which, of course, was a jolt. So I fell off the trolley. And the trolley kept going towards the stalls, but he by then got hold of it. And of course, the people in the front two or three rows of the stalls were going, oh my God, this is going to come towards us. Anyway, it didn't, thanks to Peter Bayless. There were always interesting moments with Seraf because he was a little wayward. I mean, he just was, in a wonderful, wacky way. And one night... 
I was in the wings and he had to come off and we had a, a couple of minutes before I then went on. And he came off and he said to me, oh, I didn't get the laugh. And I said, um, you didn't say the line, Sir Ralph. And he said, oh, didn't I? <laughs> so, I mean, wonderfully crazy. I think he is important because he started that kind of subversive, black, farcical humour. Um, and he was the beginning of all of that, so therefore he is important. Today, um, things are so different, aren't they? I long for it to be back like that then. But yes, I think he was, and probably still is, very important. I suspect that my admiration for Joe Wharton has probably increased. I was very young at the time that I did it, and what, did I fully appreciate what Orton was doing and what he was getting at and the characters and the... I probably didn't, but I do now, and my admiration for him has definitely increased.